to front court, lost the ball though, and the Racers can get a run out. It'll be Sapp taking it to the hole and jamming it in. Missed the layup, but Farrell grabs the rebound, shovels it to Williams for the stop. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the season premiere of Murray State Basketball with head coach Steve Prohm. Dave Winder here at the CFSB Center, where this week the Racers take on Bethel and then Western Kentucky, and we'll talk about that uh, as we go along here today. But first, we're going to have our first visit with head coach Steve Prohm, and the Racers just coming back from the challenge in Music City where they had a third-place finish, uh, lost a tight game to uh, Portland. Uh, lost a blowout game to Valpo, but then came back Sunday and really played well in a uh, big win over Drake. So, Coach, uh, you know, we were just talking about here, it wasn't the best of weeks for Racer basketball. But you know what? Um, in the face of adversity, you guys came back on Sunday and beat a good team out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Yeah, it was a terrible week. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, call it what it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, we just got to stay the course. Uh, we got to get back to this. This is good. We got exposed in the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, from a, on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. Offensively, we're not shooting the ball well. Uh, we're missing open shots, and then we're taking some forced shots. Uh, we got to go inside out. Uh, we've got to get some easier shots off our defense, but we're struggling on the defensive end. And starting tomorrow, uh, we've got to get back to re-instilling our culture. And, you know, our kind of our hashtag this year is drive the piling. We've got to rebuild our foundation on the defensive end. And, and we will, and we'll be better for this uh, two week uh, of struggles um, down the road. Okay, so the racers uh, heading into games this week against Bethel and Western Kentucky. And with that, we'll go ahead and roll the uh, tape and uh, take a look at the Sunday game against uh, the Drake Bulldogs and the racers here playing for third place in the challenge in Music City. Uh, TJ Sapp gets a slam there. Racers up early three to two. And, Coach, if the, if the floor looks familiar, it should, because this is where the OVC tournament will be in March. It was good to get three games in there. Yeah, hopefully we just have different results. And that's why yep. I told the guys, I said, man, see, see, how you feel, see how you feel right now, see how you felt, think about how you felt last year. But you can see right there, Jarvis Williams, I thought, played really well yesterday against Drake. I thought he kicked the ball inside out. He rebounded 20 and 10, and, and mm -hmm. he's got to play well for us. And, you know, I'd love to be 5-2 and two right now and get that Houston and Portland game back. We shot poorly, and we lost both games on the last possession. But, you know, the couple games, Portland, Xavier, Valpo, they presented us some problems because of their physicality and their size up front. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get better from that. And was proud of Jarvis' effort. I thought T.J. Sapp's energy was really good on the defensive end. And you also saw a shot there by uh, Justin Seymour. Uh, he, had a, he had 14 points off the bench for Murray State. Uh, you saw that broken play, uh, Drake scored on that, and it was a 24-24 game with uh, 6 2 uh, left to go in the half. And then, Coach, it was a, uh, I guess it was a one-point lead for the Racers here late in the first half. Rambo scored 30-31, uh, to 31, but then they hit the three uh, to finish the half. But still, you go on at halftime, you're only down by two. Yeah, I wasn't really worried. I knew this game, you know, when you've been in it for a while, you kind of understand these you know, consolation game, so to speak, mm -hmm. third game in three days, how they're going to be. And uh, I thought we'd win the basketball game. I didn't think we'd come out and beat them 30 and just shoot the cover off of it. And, you know, we didn't shoot it well yesterday either. Uh, but, you know, we were good enough when we had to be, went through a stretch in the second half. We put together some good offense and some good defensive possessions and we're fortunate enough to win. And now it's time to uh, get to work. Okay, so it was a 36-35 game. Racers down by a point uh, in the, at, at halftime. And then we'll start here with about 9.38 to go. Uh, man, T.J. Sapp got going here. He had a three off an inbounds play. Uh, he dumped it down to Williams for a good bucket. Then he hit another three. And this is the point of the game here where you got a little separation. We did. and a great. We had a great lob to Jarvis right there. Good corner pass to T.J. And this right here, I know it doesn't show the whole possession, but that right there is our probably our best offensive possession of the year. We got two or three ball reversals. We made the extra pass, and I thought Justin Seymour offensively played really well. And then Farrell gets fouled here, makes two big free throws. So 
We did some good things. Uh, obviously, what about this player? These guys right here for <laughs> them, and they and they did this on their own. That's what we when we they know. That was that, more, I was more proud of that one play. That showed me, all right, man, we got it in us. They know <laughs> what we've just got to we got to lock in every single possession, every single day, and they did that right there in that possession. I know the tape's still rolling uh -huh. right now, but. We want to run some action out of that, and, and that's our first look off that play is, is the lob. And they know three seconds or less on the shot clock, one or two seconds left in the game. That's We're probably going to go to that action. And that was, Cam did a terrific job of calling that out, and then Moss made a terrific pass, and Jarvis a great finish. Well, you see the, the box score there. The racers went at 68 to 59. Murray State shot 42% on the day, and uh, they also uh, were 18 out of 26 from the free throw line including six out of six from Jarvis Williams. That was great. He had 20 and 10. And you see Justin Seymour there with the 14 points as the racers finished up uh, the challenge in Music City with a big win over Drake. And that'll bring us into the middle game, and that was the game against Valparaiso on Saturday. So let's go ahead and roll it from Municipal Auditorium. Uh, game two here, Coach. And, you know, this first half I thought was maybe the, the most hard-fought half I've seen Murray State play in a long time. It was it was a highly competitive situation, wasn't it? Man, I thought and that that's what was the most frustrating thing about the way that result ended. Yep. I thought that first half was fun to watch, it fun was. to coach in, fun to play in for these guys. And it was a high level game. Uh, we finally got the lead back, then we were down two and you know, we kinda had a cheap offensive foul. It was a foul, but it was just kind of a cheap play that we were trying to get a handoff play for T J to drive to the basket and um, you know, we ended up, we had the ball down four and, and, and we were, should have held for one shot. Cam shot a three, we missed. We go in the half down six. And then, you know, we had kind of the disruption at the end of the half. But, you know, we answered every run they had in the first half and then they came out in the second half and we just weren't ready to play. Uh, bottom line, we weren't ready to play. They came out and uh, hit us with a big run and we're down 55-40 and that was really the, well, the ball game we couldn't recover. Well, you noticed here too, Murray State's wearing their Navy uh, uniforms because they were the designated home team for game one and game three, but here in the middle, Valpo was, was the home team. Uh, you saw Rambo hit a shot uh, there, and this is all still a uh, first half uh, action. Moss hit the three there, and coach, that's where I really thought maybe you guys were getting ready to take off. That was a, a 30 to 28 lead, uh, but then, man, it, it was like, I think it was after the last media timeout. It's, it just started to go south a little well, bit. Well, we have not done a good job, and our good teams has done a great job of closing halves and winning the last four minutes. And we have not done a great job. If you look at the Portland game, if you look at the Houston game, if you look mm -hmm. at the Valparaiso game, we have not done a good job closing halves. And that's a great pass. This is the first half we actually shot the basketball well all season. Yeah, right, it's really right. the only half we've shot it well. And, I think we were six, eight for three, something like that. But it got it got heated for a moment. I think the refs kind of they didn't call when you never call the first foul. And in the way they say they're going to monitor and ref the games coming from Curtis Shaw is call the first one. Well, they let the first, second, and third go, and that's why we had the situation at the end. And um, you know, I got teed up. I can't do that. I guess I was one step out of the coach's box, but. You know, like they said on Sunday, I saw Coach uh, Coach Gilletti from Drake. <laughs> he was at half court, and uh, they told me the refs told me they said, "Well, it's a different day, it's different rules." So, and they were joking, and I understood what they meant. Well, uh, we're, we're not going to belabor the second half very much, but it was a, it was a 50 to 21 second half. And Coach, I know in the last say 11 minutes, uh, you were doing a few different things uh, that you normally wouldn't do. You were trying a few different combinations. Had, yeah, the game was, yeah. I was really trying to think, to be honest, I was trying to think that, hey, this one, we're not winning this game. We got to win tomorrow, though, right, and right. Uh, play a bunch of guys in, in, in a different lineup. So the game got out of hand a little bit, but probably wouldn't do that if you're playing, you know, just on a Wednesday night or a Saturday afternoon. But uh, credit Valpo, they had a great tournament. They're playing really, really well right now, and they've got a terrific team. So, uh, we're, we're going to get better. Uh, Bryce Drew obviously has uh, has our number right now. Valpo has our number right now. But well, they, they, also, they got a good team, though. They got a good team. They they're they're playing really good, and we, we could have maxed out that night and probably not beat them uh, that night. They were yep. they were shooting the ball extremely well. Well, there you see the box score. It's not one that you'd want to frame anytime soon. But uh, hey, Valpo went back and really took care of Portland on Sunday to go three and zero in the tournament. So 
Uh, there is game two of the challenge in Music City as the racers fell 93-58. And that'll take us into game one of the challenge in Music City. Let's go ahead and roll that. This was the Friday afternoon game, evening game, as it was the day after Thanksgiving and the racers taking on Portland. Coach, we knew uh, this was going to be a whale of a ball game. And we started off with that play right there, uh, and it all started with Wayne Langston going behind your bench to tip that ball back into play. Yeah, you know what's it's it, the frustrating thing is sometimes we're playing really hard, but we're not finishing plays. In times where we could be up five or seven, it's staying at three, and then it's a breakdown, and now they make a bucket. And so. We've got to do a better job extending leads, and that's one of the things that hurt us in this Portland game. And, you know, Cameron's gotten in foul trouble at the, the, in the Houston game and in the Portland game, and we haven't played him the last four minutes, and that's something I need to look at. You know, last year we played him all the time because uh, we didn't really have a, an option uh, off the bench, so I was kind of forced. It's kind of forced my hand. Right now I've gone with Flo Mo, and he's done a solid job for us, but. We've gotten outscored. We're up 27-20. We got to be able to knock them out a little bit. We're up five in the second half. We got to be able to extend the lead. Well, coach, uh, in this game, uh, this is all still first half action here. Uh, as Sap hit a corner three, um, I, I was joking with you. It was this was after you'd played uh, Valpo. I'm like, can we get a team without a seven footer on it or two or three seven footers? At one time, Portland had Vandemar, uh, Gurin, and I think it was uh, Baker on the floor at the same time. That was three guys, 6'10 and taller. Yeah, they, you know, we've played against big teams and, and this is actually the second half action. That cut it to two or there, tied yeah, it right, right there. Great, right. great shot by TJ, great execution by our guys. And, you know, th this is the last play of the game and, and that's always tough, one, yeah. one second left, trying to be able to catch and shoot for a three. And uh, we have a play design, but 1.1, it's just tough, tough to get yeah. a catch and shoot three right there. So. Um, you know, the thing that, you know, I look back on, we had opportunities. TJ misses a wide open three, down one, and I told our guys so they know if we ever get a, if we ever get a stop and we're down one and there's less than 10 seconds, we want to go. I don't want to call timeout and give the defense a time to set. Right. Now, if it's 20 seconds, 25 seconds, that may be a different situation. So. Um, we got a great look by TJ, and it was set up perfect. And he's the one guy that really you were hoping he would knock that down. But um, and then the possession before we just didn't really execute like we needed to, and and that's on all of us. So yeah. um, the Portland game, the Houston game, obviously I've said it over and over. They make you sick. You know, if you win those two games, everybody probably feels a whole lot better right now. But hopefully these lessons early. And I know some teams look like they're playing tremendous in the non-conference and. Uh, we struggled in non-conference last year, but we got better. And like I told our team yesterday, we went 13 and three in the conference last year. There's only seven teams in the last 20 something years at Murray State right. that has had a better conference record than that. And I think the league's as good as it's ever been when you look at the success of the league at a conference, the success of sending guys into the NBA and an NBA summer right. league. So we're, we're just gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. I know uh, it's like Aaron Rodgers and LeBron James said, relax. I know everybody's upset. There's nobody more frustrated than me. Uh, we just got to go back to work and reinstill the culture of what we know we need to be, and that's a great defensive team. All right, well, the racers are going to keep working, and we've got two big games coming up this week. And we'll take our first break here on the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm, and we'll do that, and we'll come back and talk about the games this week next. The Racer Report with Chris Hatcher is brought to you by Ruth Brothers Wine and Spirits. Serving you for 50 years, Roof Brothers with two locations in Paducah, Kentucky. And by Pepsi Mid-America, share your summer picks on Twitter with hashtag RealBigSummer. And by Campus Evolution Villages in Murray, the best in student living. Call 270-767-1818 to plan your tour and visit. And by Kentucky Community and Technical College System, higher education begins here.